and we've talked about this before, can I might as well mention it now because somebody got mad at me in one show when I said, well, we're talking about Malachi Sadiq and about how that Malachi Sadiq is a priesthood. And if you read in the book of Ivrim or Hebrews, he says, look, Malachi Sadiq has no mother and no father. But when you look at the Gospels, it says Mashiach has this mother. But in the Hebrews, it says Malachi Sadiq has no mother, no father. Of course not, because Malachi Sadiq is king and priest. There is no mother and father to the office. It's an office, not a person. And so when he, when he talks about Mashiach being Malachi Sadiq in the order of Malachi Sadiq, he's a priest in the order of Malachi Sadiq, that is to say king and priest. And equally important to that king and priesthood is actually this idea of the mantle of king and priest, which Anok was seventh from Adam, and then Noah is claimed to be eighth, wearing the mantle of the priesthood of Meliki Sadiq. So I wanted to kind of clarify that before we get too far into it. But so Shem arguably is the one who held the order of Meliki Sadiq in the city of Shalom, also called Shalem or Salem, which would later become held by the Jebusites when the Jebusites built a fortress near Salem, actually right next door to the village. And that fortress becomes Yebu Shalom. So the town was Shalom, or I think maybe the, the dialect was probably Shalem, Shalem. And it was Yebu Shalem, Yebu Shalem. But the bait being shaped like this with a line, if you take that line up because the scroll kept turning and, and moved the line away, it would come to look like a resh. And so Yebu Shalom becomes Yerushalom, Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. Huh. This fortress of the Jebusites, right? And then from Shem, of course, Abraham comes to study with Shem. Now, somebody put up the other day, put up a, a timeline of the lives of all the patriarchs. And, of course, using the Masoretic text and not the Septuagint, which adds 100 years to, I don't know, seven patriarchs. But if you leave out that Septuagint extra, you know, extra centuries, and you go back to what's in the Masoretic text and you follow those years, you'll discover that Shem outlived Abraham, outlived Yitzhak, only Yaakov outlived Shem. So the book of Jasher tells us that Abraham actually went to study with Shem, with Malachi Sadiq, and he was given the Hebrew language such that he was able to read the scrolls. He was able to read the scrolls. So do we know what scrolls were there? Well, Hanok is probably more than one scroll, especially when you're talking about first Hanok. And for the purposes of this discussion, Let's clarify. There are three books of Hanok, supposedly. You have one Hanok, which is the one that the fragments were found in K4 Qumran, which was published by the Ethiopian and Assyriac churches, churches that were notoriously founded by K4 or Peter, Simon Peter. And those churches published uh, Hanok, and they have the same edition of Hanok, and they are conspicuously consistent with the fragments in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And those, it was the Ethiopian Hanok, the three copies that were, that were brought back into England and translated initially by D.H. Lawrence and later by uh, Charles and later by Kneb. But all of that came from the same Ethiopian text, which had an origin at a bare minimum from the second century A.D. A bare minimum the second century A.D. But the caves in Qumran indicate that it had an origin at least in the third century B.C., and that was probably a copy taken from scrolls that were much, much older. So what we see here is that Hanok has a tremendous uh, secular record that appears to put it back at least to 300 B.C. and much farther. And the record also substantiates that the Hanok we see now as one Hanok is very, very close, very, very accurate to the Ethiopian Hanok, and that was very, very close or accurate to the Essene fragments. 
So there is a substantial body of circumstantial evidence here demonstrating the credibility of this book, that it's not a fraud, it's not a forgery, it's not a fake book. It was a book that existed at that time and is older than most of the books we see, of course, in the New Testament, and as old as any record that we have as to the Old Testament. So as a consequence, if you're going to say, well, this is, does not have enough substantiation historically, you have to toss out virtually everything in the Old Testament. 